great because we all have different gifts and they all function differently. So I want to introduce Tim. Tim, come on up, buddy. And everything. And this is you. It's all you. I'm taking the back seat today, buddy. Go right here. Hope everybody's doing okay today. Um, as some of you may have seen, the message today is about the true power of spiritual warfare. Um, and, well, let, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us this day. Things that we've seen, things that we haven't seen, and just your presence with us again. That you are with us, whether we know it or not. That you're always with us because you're closer than anybody could ever be because you live inside us. Thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. And so many gadgets. Um, let's see. First thing we're going to talk about is... Not working. Okay. Or maybe it's powered off. That's what it is. There we go. Technology. Modern technology. Okay. Now. In Ephesians 6, it says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord and in the power of your own strength. Make sure that you use your will, your power, to put on God's armor. Is that what it says? Hmm. Okay. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him. So, why do we do it the other way? Why do we try to do something in ourselves that only can be done through Him and by Him? Interesting question. Most of us try to do these things because we haven't really learned about how to fully rest in it. We haven't really learned about how to fully lean, trust, things like that. Because we've never heard of it that way. Paul spoke of it in Galatians about resting in him, leaning on him, being in him. Matter of fact, Paul talks a lot about in him if you just look up those scriptures in him, you'll see so very much about how he speaks about being in him. A lot of times, we use things that are specifically designed to function in our souls. It speaks about dividing the soul with the spirit. A lot of times, we don't do that. We function out of our souls, not out of our spirits. What is our soul made of? Our mind, our will, and our emotions. Many times we're either functioning out of our intellect, out of our willpower, we're going to push through and we're going to do it, or our emotions. And our emotions are like this. If we feel good, it's awesome. We can fight off the devil. We can fight off anything. We can do whatever. If we're down here, oh no, the devil's beating me up. We're doing that and doing that. 90% of the time, he's sitting back watching. All that's happening is we're wearing ourselves out with this. Being connected in the Spirit is a lot more level. That doesn't mean you're not going to have good times or bad times, but it means your reaction to it won't be a reaction. It will be an action. These things won't affect us because we'll be in them ourselves. So... 
Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand up to the strategies and the deceits of the devil. In King James Version, which me personally, I'm a little bit more used to, uses wiles. And what is that word wiles? What does that word mean, strategies, deceits, all that stuff? What does that word mean? The word in Greek is methodia. Cunning, arts, deceit, craft, and trickery. It's where we get the word method from. He has a method. It works really well. It's worked for at least 6,000 years. Why change something that works well? Next part of this, which I believe is very, very important. We continually wrestle with flesh and blood. We have to fight against them at every single time. We have to focus and make sure that we understand that we fight against flesh and blood. Is that what it says? No. So why do we do it? Why do we continue wrestling with flesh and blood? When the very first part of this that Paul instructs us is we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. Human beings in spiritual warfare is n are not our enemy. They can be deceived. They can be doing things because of wrong motives or whatever, but they themselves are not our enemy. We've seen very often where, we, where one side or the other is demonized. Oh, they're doing this because they have this kind of spirit. They're doing this because of, you know, they're doing this. Ultimately, it's deception. What's the worst part of deception? You're being deceived. You think you're doing something right, but you're not. <sighs> we must understand flesh and blood is not our enemy. That's the basic part of this. If we don't understand this basic part, the rest will be trying to use the weapons of God against each other. If we do that, we will fail. And the enemy will sit back and laugh. Do we want that? No. We're called to love one another, not fight one another. Let's go on to the next part. Stand, therefore, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, and having put on the breastplate of integrity and moral rectitude and right standing with God. Stand. Having done all, stand. You're not standing alone. You're standing in Him. You're standing. loins girt about with truth. What is that truth? God loves you. For God so loved the world. That includes you. That includes me. That includes all of us. Even, the, even your boss that bugs you at work. Even that co-worker that annoys you. Even that neighbor that just can't seem to get it together and it's always annoying. Even your roommate may be bugging you. They are ones that God loves. And then he said, rest most within ourselves. Having put on the breastplate of what some versions say as well as righteousness. Do we put on our own righteousness. No. We put on His righteousness. Because are we righteous in and of ourselves? No. 
most of us stay there. And we don't look at ourselves in the correct way. We focus on our motives. We focus on our sins. And whatever you focus on is going to get bigger. If you focus on your mistakes, your sins, your, your mess, it's going to blow up. You will never achieve anything if you focus in a negative way on yourselves. That's what Adam and Eve did right after they ate the fruit. You can go and look at it in Genesis. They looked at themselves. The focus should never be on you. The focus should be on him. Realize and understand how much he loves you, how much he cares about you. That is the truth. His righteousness is what was done on the cross. You now have access to his righteousness. Paul himself says, put on Christ, who has become righteousness, sanctification, redemption. All of this for you. All of this is done for you to take and use it. And having, your, having put your feet in preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, what about that word peace? That word peace is Irene. It's a state of national tranquility, exception from the rage and havoc of war. It is in the plural. It doesn't just mean your peace. It is at least two entities. So it's you and someone else in peace. It exists between two or more entities. Why is peace so important? Because without it, you're going, you're jumping through hoops. Without it, you can't think straight. Without it, you can't rest. Without it, you can't do any of the things of God. You're going through, you're going through motions, you're reacting to everything because you're living in fear or pain. First John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but full-grown love, perfect love. Perfect does not mean absolutely perfect. Perfect means mature. It expels, according to this version, every trace of error. It casts out. There are two forces in this universe, in any universe, love and fear. If you're working in one, you're not working in the other. If you're working out of fear, you're not, work, you're not walking in love. If you're working in love, you're not walking in fear. Most everything tries to get you to work out of fear. Because if you're in fear, you can be easily led and controlled. If you're in love, you're not even controlled by God. You're simply wanting to walk with Him, to talk with Him, to love Him, to love one another. Because out of that love that He sheds abroad in your hearts, that's what changes you. Lift up above shield of faith. Why is it above all? With faith, you can overcome anything, but it's love that takes you through it. That word, lifting 
have taking different translations have it differently. Is Anna Lambana in Greek. In Greek, there's two words for taking. There's lambano and dekomai. Dekomai means I take, take something, but I have it. I put it in my pocket. I don't do anything with it, but I have it. That's what most people do with their faith. That's what most people do in their walk with the Lord. That's what most people do with each other. They take the things of God, and they put them in their pocket. They got it. Oh, yeah, I've heard that sermon. Oh, yeah, I've read that teaching. I got it. I'm good. Okay. What are you doing with it? I can have all the right things when I go fishing. I can have the tool. I can have the right bait. I can have the right line. I can have the right pole. I can even have everything hooked up. I can have one for fly fishing. I can have one for regularly using bait. But if I don't actually go out and fish, what good is any of it? Without doing that, it means nothing. We have to actually take it and use it. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. What is that for? The helmet protects the head. The head is where most of all of our thoughts come in. And most of the time, we live our lives out with God, like that old game, He loves me, He loves me not. I prayed today, God loves me. I didn't read my Bible today, God loves me not. I did something nice for someone, God loves me. I forgot to do this thing at church. He loves me not. It's not about what you do. All of your do's have been covered by the cross. All of your bad things, all of your sin, every single one, have already been dealt with. They're already dealt with. The question is, do you want to walk in Him and have a relationship with Him or not? It's not about this. In many ways, it's not even about this. It's about walking a relationship in him with him and the sword which is the word well that's your bible right that word word is rhema Jesus is spoken of as logos the word of this word is a specific word that is given to you. For, can it come from the Bible? Yes. Can it come from the voice of the Holy Spirit? Yes. It all depends on what you're doing, where you are in your relationship with Him, where you are in your walk, in your journey. Where are you at this time? What is your focus? And words can be living or they can be dead. What's the difference in that? Okay. A dead word. You're going to do that? You think you can do this? No, you can't. You're going to fail. You're going to start a business? You? You are a waste of space. All of these are dead words. They don't produce any life, they produce death. What are living words? You can make it. It'll be good. It'll be okay. Think and be. Don't focus on your circumstances. Focus on Him. Walk in Him. 
as he is, so are we in this world. These are living words. These generate life. They generate hope. They generate strength. Not in ourselves. In him. These are things which encourage us to keep going. That's the difference between living words and dead words. You can either feast off of one or the other. You feast off dead words, part of you will die. You feast off living words, you'll live and grow. divine power has bestowed upon us a few things and we have to pray really hard and fast really hard to get the rest. Is that what it says? No. For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that we need for life and godliness through how the full personal knowledge of him who has called us by and to his own glory and excellence. How do we get these things? Through knowledge of him. Not head knowledge, but relationship. There are people that know all about Michael Jordan and all of his, all of his victories, all of his defeats. These people cried when he lost his dad. These people celebrated when he won his victories. If they were to meet him on the street, they would be so excited. Michael! Run right up to him. What would happen? I don't know you. Who are you? They know all about him, but they don't know him. That's the difference. In real spiritual warfare, it's not about what you do. It's about who you are and who you know. There were seven guys who tried to do the whole spiritual warfare thing. They came across some demons and they said, we're going to cast you out through Jesus that Paul talks about. The demons said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? And they beat him up. All seven of them. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know. Your relationship in Him, how that flows. How does that continue? How does that start? How does that grow? Praying whenever you have a need. Pray whenever you're in church. Pray when you have meals. Pray to impress. Is that what it says? No. Pray at all times. On every occasion, in every season. In the Spirit. With all manner of prayer and entreaty. Keep alert and watch with purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of your needs. Interceding on behalf of your family's needs. Interceding on behalf of your friend's needs. Whenever they let you know, whenever you feel the unction, right? Interceding in behalf of all the saints. Now, you can look at this. I can look at this and go, there's no way I can do all of this. No, you can't in yourself. You are not designed to be able to do this in yourself. All of the things that are in the Bible that say that we're supposed to do are not designed for you to do in and of yourself. If you're trying to do it, it's like soul power. What is the difference between soul power and spirit power? Imagine a laptop. The battery's fully charged. It's unplugged. What can it do 
that another laptop is plugged into. Anything. For a little while. But eventually, the power dies. If it's plugged in, it can keep going forever. That's the difference between the soul and the spirit. You can even do some things a little bit, but not forever. That depends on how strong you are in your soul, in your intellect, or in your emotions. Some people are, have a very strong will. Some people have very strong, have very strong control over their emotions. Some people have a very deep intellect. And yeah, that'll take you somewhere for a while, but it won't keep you there. It was never. You're designed and meant to function out of your spirit, out of your communion with God, out of your relationship with God. That's where the light comes from. I like this version myself. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Again, this is not something you can do in and of yourself. This is something you can do in your walk with God, in your journey with God, in your relationship with Him. When Peter went out and walked on the water, he was fine. Because he focused on Jesus. When he didn't focus on Jesus, when he took his eyes off of Him, that was when he started to sink. Where are your eyes located? Where are you focused? How do you recharge with God? What is something that does that? Let me give you a little bit of homework. For the next week, first thing when you wake up, don't worry about reading your Bible. Don't worry about praying. Now, I'm not saying don't pray or don't read your Bible. But the first thing, take five minutes and just say, Lord, love me. Focus on him and receive what he has just for five minutes. Do that for a week. See what happens. Father, thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for watching over us, being with us. And again, even as we don't see or don't know, we know that you're with us because you've told us you always would be. And we're going to rejoice and rest in that fact. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, thank you, Tim. That was awesome, buddy. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And I hope that everybody can get talk talk with him afterwards. There were some comments and stuff. I love the one when you were talking about um, not wrestling flesh and blood, talking about other people, people, just people. And I thought one of the comments was great because they said, I think we can wrestle more with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny because we have the discussion. This is what we do all the time. So I'm kind of inviting y'all into our world of what happens on uh, after we get done. But I think it's true. And I think the actually when, how how you laid out the armor of God actually helps us not to wrestle with ourselves anymore. Mm -hmm. It's all about the love for us, and it takes away the shame, the guilt, our our mistakes. It takes it all away, and that we can lay hold of this. And and I, I think I'm gonna add this because I think some we talked about last week. It's true, true, true spiritual warfare is this, and you're talking about we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. It's loving each other just as he loves us. I mean, I think that's amazing. That's amazing in itself. It's okay. Stay with you, baby. Before you get knocked down. Um, uh, but it's loving one another because we don't wrestle with people. When they come against us, I think it's amazing that we can put all this stuff on because he loves us. Now we can rightfully discern the situation at, at hand which somebody may be having a disagreement about, maybe attacking us, persecuting us. We actually get to see what's really behind the door and what the real motive is. And so, you know, I think that's kind of an amazing part. And then you just get to love the person. I think you get to help bring them out so that the real answer can come in and the real solution to the problem. 
and what's really the motive gets gets wiped out. I love it. Thanks, man. I, we got the I, we got the roundhouse last week, and it was just me and you. Of course, the girls were sound asleep. Wife was away. You know, we got to go back and forth. We had fun, didn't we? I mean, we were talking about uh, what was it? Fasting, talking about giving food and stuff, and and, and all that type of thing. So I. I I think it's amazing, and I encourage you guys at home as well, and I keep encouraging us to just keep fellowshipping. Like, have those roundhouses with people, you know, and, and, and just come together and talk about stuff. Because I think that the last week you didn't know quite know, and all of a sudden we start talking how all of a sudden, well, it helped me, but it helped you, and all of a sudden start, things just start flowing. I want to share that with everybody because I want to encourage you to be with each other and talk to people and and have, that, and have that fellowship with each other. We're the body, and we work better when we're together than when we are apart. Christianity was not designed to be alone. Exactly. Never meant for us to be alone. We're meant to be together. And that's when you see the fruit, the full gifts of the Spirit. I think it's the Church Appreciation Month. And I think in that sense is that it's to honor everybody whose gift is being, being shown out. Because it takes boldness to step out. It takes His grace for us to step out into our gifts. I mean, you tell me. How hard is it for you, and I'm talking about, that's not just to get off your humbleness. How hard is it for somebody to take their gift and clean a toilet? Oh, everybody wants to stand up here and talk. But it takes grace to get down and clean a toilet, and if that's your gift. And some people have no problem with cleaning the toilet. They're terrified of getting up there. Exactly. And I think we should appreciate everybody's gift, and not just the quote-unquote pastor's gift. Because I think we all have the leadership in some form, some fashion, and that's what helps bring the church to move forward. Because somebody gets down, guess what? Dad's going to bring somebody else in to lead while they're down to lift them back up to get the whole church moving in the right direction that we need to be. And I think that's amazing. So I call it church appreciation month, gifts, and, and appreciating each other. We have, he has placed each one of us in our hearts and together and bring us together. I mean, even you on Facebook Live, I mean, you're help bringing out our gifts and help, hopefully it's bringing out your gifts and all of us working together. I think that's amazing. So, anyways, I'm hungry. I'm hungry and everything. And I don't know about you, I'm starving. So we will have to keep moving because we'll have to talk about this. Like, I think it'd be great to sit down and just talk about all this stuff in our Q and A session sometime in the near future for October, for October. But, but I want to kind of put this part here too because we get come down to our giving portion, and and we we open the door if, if somebody feels the need to give to us financially. We we'd be more happy to accept it. We just want to make sure you give out of a... What are you doing? Oh. Having fun. Give from the right motive. It's all about the motive. And, it, and I think sometimes we also get scared to give, too, because we're afraid that what? That when we give, we're depleted. I mean, I think one of the hardest things to give is financially, but also it's hard for us to give compliments to people, to give from the encouragement, because we feel like we will never have encouragement. I mean, I, I can talk about 2 Corinthians 8, or nine, and it talks about, you know, you can be cheerful because God has made all grace abound to you. All grace. I mean, it's resurrection power because of what Jesus has done. He has given you everything. So you know what? For you to step out to give, I mean, you might give out financially, you might give a hug, you might help somebody in their needs, or you help your neighbor, whatever it may be, that there's grace there for you to do it. He's provided everything for you. Just like the scripture above says, Jesus, the, he knew the Father had given him everything. He knew who he was, and the Father had given him everything. He knew he was he came from the Father, and he was going to the Father. And that right there allowed him to help one another. Him to take out a servant's talent and serve. And we serve by giving and helping and doing stuff. And so I want you to know that no matter what, if you get financially aided, great. If you don't, great too. But whatever... Our, our walk is, our journey is for this coming week. I want you to know who you are. See, mocking me. See, oneness, you ain't, you ain't mimicking your father, don't you? Yeah, yeah. But you, I want you to know that you have everything. That who you are. That dad has placed everything into your hand. That you are from him and you're going back to him. And guess what? There's grace for you to move and there's grace for you to get. I want to encourage you. If you're online, Facebook, you can go to our, we have a link above you to, uh, it says offering, to give an offering and go straight to our PayPal. Just give whatever he leads you to do and just know that you'll always be taken care of no matter what you give. And it's not about trying to give so you can be blessed. You are blessed.
you're blessed. That's why you can give. <laughs> I think that's amazing. And so I want you to give from where you're at and with that. And Tim, you're not behind a thing to shut it off. Let's say goodbye. See, see, it's okay. He got comfortable today. It's okay. Hey, I, I actually encourage, they encouraged me because he enjoyed himself. If you did not know, he's always first time, first time getting up here doing it. I mean, we had the Q&A. It's a little different. So I love that. He felt at home. I think that's great. And then give him encouragement. If you're on Facebook Live, please drop him and give him encouragement because I think it's great. And she's excited. She's just excited. She's up here with daddy. She used to be up here with daddy. Let's dance. Let's dance. 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 You want to dance everybody away? It's an amazing week. Well, I want you all to know to have an amazing week. Our, our time here but you with Facebook Live, it's done uh, at this point with all of us. But uh, I want to encourage you all to have an amazing week and to trust him. And what your homework was to wake up every morning for the first five minutes and say, Lord, love me. I want to encourage you just to say that and allow that to be your life. Let that be the first things you say. I mean, it's just encouragement. It's just a suggestion. It's not saying we're commanding you to do it. We're inspiring you. That's all we want to say. So have an amazing week. Enjoy his love. And we want to hear testimonies next week and everything we have. Uh, I can't talk. Hope everybody has an easy week.